right, so welcome to our public animal feeding. We do it every Saturday at noon. Uh, we have our uh, Facebook live stream. Thank you everyone for joining us on Facebook. So without further ado, we'll get started. So over here we have a fish. If you guys can try to find the fish, do you see him? Barely. Yeah, so uh, he's over here. And that is a California scorpion fish. And they're called scorpion fish because they have venomous spines. So they can actually uh, sting you with their venom. I've heard it's similar to like the pain of a snake bite, like a rattlesnake bite, but I don't want to chance it, so I don't know what it feels like. And she has really great camouflage. As you can see, she looks just like a rock. And we're feeding her Caitlin fish. <laughs> so she is an ambush predator. She pretty much waits for the food to come to her and then um, sucks it in like that. Uh, fish have a special um, cavity in their mouth called a buccal cavity, and that's how they can create that suction. So when they open their mouth, it just sucks the food in. So she usually only eats one fish for us. Uh, she's very content and doesn't use a lot of energy. As you can see, she likes to hang out down and pretend she's a rock. So next we're going to feed our swell sharks. So over here we have swell sharks. We have six sharks here. And uh, they were hatched here at the interpretive center. Uh, they're probably about four to six months old now. Um, they were donated to us by our friends at the uh, Cabrillo Marine Aquarium. Uh, they donated eggs to us. The eggs are called a mermaid's purse. Um, and it's like a thick shell, and it has little strings on it to hold on to kelp so that they don't get washed out to shore. Um, these guys are a very docile shark, as you can see. They're pretty much nocturnal, uh, meaning they're only really active at night. And we feed them pieces of squid and Caitlin fish, like we fed the other fish there. They're very sleepy today. <laughs> I must have overfed them on Thursday. We feed these guys three times a week. So they can grow to be, that one's awake, about four feet long. They're in the cat shark family. And they actually have a special protein in their skin that glows under UV light. They glow a green color under UV light. And sharks are very interesting. I don't know if you've ever felt a shark before, but they have a really rough skin. And that is from a specialized scale called a dermal denticle, which is like dentist is for teeth. It's basically teeth on their skin. So if you feel them, uh, it feels kind of like sandpaper. Like now they're waking up. <laughs> Almost had a shark bite. And swell sharks are actually kind of prone to a disease called goiter. It's like a growth in your throat. And um, the squid helps them get the right nutrients so that they don't develop goiter. So we give them lots of squid. How big do these guys get? Uh, they get about four feet long. Oh, OK. So I think like the biggest are like five feet at most, but they don't get very big. And they're called swell sharks because uh, they swell up. They suck water into their body and swell up. And that not only helps them look bigger to their predators, but also helps them uh, get stuck into crevices so they can't get pulled out. Looks like these guys are getting pretty full. We can move on to the next ones. So next we're going to feed our large tank right here behind us. So if we just want to turn around. And here 
guys want to come on over here to get a better look at these guys. So I'll let I'll introduce you to some of the fish first before I open this, because they're going to go wild. <laughs> uh, the two guys here that look kind of checkerboard are kelp bass. Uh, they live in the kelp forest. Um, we have the big guy with the, the big spot on him. That is a half moon. And the little green one is called an opali. All these fish are native to California. And if you look down in the rocks, there is <laughs> um, a lobster. He'll come out once he smells the food. He knows where the food goes. We also have some uh, sea stars in here. <laughs> we have uh, three different kinds of sea stars. We have the big ones over there, or the giant spine stars. We have a purple one around here somewhere. That's an ochre star. And we have another species that we haven't identified yet. Uh, it's very fast moving. We feed them mussels. So once everybody's had enough of this and won't bite my fingers while I try to feed them. I'm sure the little guy. So sea stars are also really cool in that if they get an arm chopped off, they can grow back their limbs. here is different from the lobster that you see in restaurants on your dinner table. This guy is a spiny lobster. 
He doesn't have those big claws uh, like the uh, main lobsters do. And he uses his spines as a defense instead of his claws. Looks like he's not hungry today. Anybody want the fish? All right. So now we'll feed our uh, touch tank tide pool critters in this tank over here. <laughs> so, some of the animals we have in here, we have another type of sea star here called a bat star. And they're called a bat star because um, they have webbing between their arms, kind of like how a bat does. Uh, we also have two little fish in here that are called uh, spotted kelp fish. They uh, camouflage just like kelp and they can adjust their color to their surroundings. We also have another fish in here called a bay blenny. Uh, her name, his name is Michelle because he likes to hang out inside of that shell there. We also have some striped shore crabs in here, right over here. And these guys are a pretty common crab. I'll get them to come out a little bit. Tease them with the tongs. You can see these guys in tide pools and even right here on the shore uh, at Bolsa Chica. And one of my favorite animals in here, strangely enough, is this snail. So this is a Kellett's whelk, and they are actually a predatory snail. So they eat other snails and mussels and things like that. And you can see he's closed up right here. He's got an extra piece of shell on his foot, which is the squishy part. And they use that as a trap door. Uh, and that not only protects them from predators, but also um, protects them from drying out when the tide goes down. But they have a specialized um, tongue called a radula, and it's a long tongue with two rows of teeth on it. And what they do is they take their prey, like a snail or a mussel, and they take their radula and scrape and scrape and scrape and scrape until there's a hole. And then they can stick their tongue in there and eat the animal that's in there. So I just find that pretty fascinating. All right, so I think we've introduced everybody in here. We can start feeding them. So we feed them pieces of squid and capelin fish and sometimes krill. And these little kelp fish will eat everybody's food even if it's too big for them. So we like to feed them first so they don't get attacked by the crabs because they'll try to steal the food from the crabs. I think they think they're bigger than they are. <laughs> And the Bay Blenny is very like shy, so you gotta bring food right to them. All right, so we'll feed our crabs now. Crabs can eat a variety of food. They're kind of scavengers. They can eat uh, dead animals or kelp. Um, uh, they can eat, you know, things that are dead, things that are alive. Also, they're omnivores, meaning they eat everything. So you guys are in for a show because we've got one right here on the glass here. So just like the other sea stars, these will take their stomach outside of their body to eat and move those little tiny feet. They have all those little suction cup feet and they'll bring it to the middle of their body. Their stomach is in the center of their body. And it looks like he's just gonna think too much about food and fall right off. Mm. It's a little for his food. This one over here might stay. So since I was able to put it in the center, you might be able to see him take his stomach out. If 
He doesn't have to take the time to bring it all the way to the center. We have one more crab in here, and that will be everybody. There's our other crab. We'll give him a nice fish head to make a mess of. Oh, not hungry today? You can't eat that. <laughs> See, they think they're way bigger than they are. That's almost the size of you. <laughs> Sometimes crabs and um, crustaceans and things won't eat when they're about to molt. Uh, molting is when they shed their exoskeleton to get bigger. And he's kind of off colored, so he might be molting soon. So wait, what did you say about the stomach, them <coughs> taking out their stomach? Yeah, so the, the sea stars have a second stomach that they <coughs> take outside their body. It's kind of like a balloon that they take out and they'll uh, cover the food and digest it outside the body so it can then be taken inside. Okay. So it takes them a minute to get the stomach out, so we might not be able to see it. Doesn't open the stomach if it lasts. Yeah, <laughs> he decided, oh, food, I'm gonna fall over. <laughs> and then just cover it up with his arm. <laughs> Are you trying to get food now? So how long will it take for them to open up one of these? I, I actually haven't sat and watched them do the whole process, really? but I would imagine it takes at least a half an hour. Because <laughs> I've done where we start the feeding and then go feed the snake, come back and they're still working on it. Uh, so it takes it takes a long time. Sea stars aren't the fastest moving animals, but uh, to get enough strength to rip it open, they need to really get as many suction cups on there and, and pull it open. Wow. All right. So are we ready to feed our non-aquatic animals? So if you guys want to follow me over to the other room. So the alligator lizards, you can um, tell them apart from the others because they have kind of a different patterning on them and they also have really long tails if they haven't lost their tail. Their tail can be up to twice as long as their body um, and lizards often if they're attacked or feel threatened they can release their tail. So what they do is um, 
there's a weak joint kind of toward the base of their tail and they can, uh, what we call, drop the tail. Um, so here we have a western side blotched lizard. Here he is. This is another species of lizard, probably the common, the most common you'll see out on the trail. They're always out there sunning themselves. And they have a very short lifespan, just about a year, which is why there are so many of them out there. And so that's three species we've covered. The last species you can find at Bolsa Chica are uh, actually an endangered species of lizard called the silvery legless lizard. So it has no legs, it mostly burrows. <laughs> and you might think a lizard without legs is just a snake, right? But there are a couple other differences. Uh, they, uh, they have eyelids. So lizards have eyelids and snakes don't have eyelids. So you don't want to get into a staring contest with a snake. <laughs> as well as uh, some lizards have a pelvis but no leg, um, which you wouldn't really be able to tell by looking at it. <laughs> Those are the four species of lizards that we have at Bolsa Chica. And next we are going to, ooh, lobster cricket, we are going to feed our amphibians. So over here we have, Island. Might take her a second to find them. She's over there in the corner. I'm gonna go in over there. There, now she sees them. So frogs are really interesting when you watch them eat. They actually use their eyes to help them swallow. So they'll grab their food and then take a big blink. It helps them swallow their food. Kind of like take medicine. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's a common misconception that they have a really long tongue to catch flies and such. It's just chameleons that have that. Uh, so she won't be able to reach with her tongue to get these crickets. She has to kind of hop up on there to get them. But I think she sees them. <laughs> They're like not moving at all. <laughs> yeah. You can see she's squishing That's down with her there. eyes there. <laughs> they're very slow moving since they're such a squishy animal that they're very uh, vulnerable. So they move slowly and use a lot of um, uh, camouflage to keep them from getting eaten. And just like the first fish that we fed, they're also an ambush predator, so they mostly wait for things to come to them. It's another way to keep them uh, protected from their predators. And over here, we have a tiger salamander. I like to call her our mud puppy because she loves to dig and burrow in the mud here. You can barely see her right here. Yep. Might not be able to see her online. Um, we'll see if we can get her to eat some of these little guys we have left. Oh, oh she's looking, looking excited. Oh, oh nope. yeah. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, salamanders are very interesting. They have uh, similar to how frogs have different life stages, they have the tadpole and the adult. They also have a tadpole stage, and it has external gills. So it's kind of like little fingers sticking out the back. Do they see in color or do they see in, in monochrome? That's an interesting question, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it would be <laughs> beneficial to see color yeah. in their environment. Given their coloring, they might. Yeah, they might, yeah. Just identify others of the same species? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would make sense. I'm not sure if she sees this one over here. But she's dug lots of burrows for them to hide in. <laughs> so, now we will feed 
the grand finale, and I'll introduce you to some of the snakes before we feed one of them. So over here, up here we've got a coastal rosy boa. Uh, these guys are native to Southern California along the coast, uh, but they are actually extinct in this area in, at the wetlands. Uh, because they don't have enough area due to urban development. So they're extinct in one place, but they're not extinct everywhere. And there's a term for that called extirpated. So you'd say they're extirpated from Pulsa Chica. Uh, we have two of those guys. Her name is Medusa. <laughs> and then down here we have uh, two gopher snakes. So the San Diego gopher snake is probably one of the most common snakes um, at Bolsa Chica and in Southern California. Uh, these guys are, none of the snakes in this room are venomous, so we'll start out with that. <laughs> um, but these guys like to pretend that they are venomous. They have a similar coloration and sometimes mimic the behavior of rattlesnakes. Uh, so the way you can tell a gopher snake from a rattlesnake is usually by the shape of their head. So if they have like a rounded kind of oval shaped head, <coughs> It's not venomous, but if they have a triangular head with those big chubby cheeks, that's where they hold their venom, so that's how you can tell it's a venomous snake. But these guys sometimes like to trick people if they feel threatened. They'll flatten out their jaw bones so it looks like they have venom. And they'll also put their tail in some leaves and shake it to sound like a rattle. So they're, they're pretty good at pretending. <laughs> yeah, we've seen uh, some of them do it before. So it's, it's very interesting how they've adapted that behavior. So what's the like keystone difference then between like the two? I mean, just that they don't have kind of Yeah, they, they don't have an actual rattle. rattle. Okay. Um, they also have like their coloration is similar, but it's not exactly the same. Yeah. So like the depending on the species of the rattlesnake, but the one we get around here is like a diamond shape. And this is kind of more like ovally shaped. Oh, okay. And they have kind of like more of a reddish color. Okay. These guys are more brown. Uh, and um, there are other differences, like they, these guys are usually skinnier, and the rattlesnakes are kind of like chunky. So I mean, rattlesnakes don't have like skins that interesting, right? Like a like an outside pattern that's that interesting. I thought they, that they were lighter. They lighter. yeah, depending on the species, they can be like uh, not as distinct. Yeah. Uh, like these are like black on brown, whereas the rattlesnakes right. are more like brown on a darker brown. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we have a picture of a rattlesnake right there. Yeah, right? we've oh, got okay. one There's... right here. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they, it does have a very similar, and you've seen what this is more of a diamond pattern, uh -huh. and that's more of a rounded pattern. Okay. And the rattle is pretty distinctive, if you see the other end of the snake, but uh, it doesn't, it makes a much more distinct sound than yeah. the, the gopher snake pretending to be a rattlesnake. <laughs> right. So th they don't really <laughs> fool people, but um, it's uh, an interesting behavior that they've developed. So um, another species of snake that we have here that's really common at Pulsa Chica is the California king snake. We have one up here and one down there, if you guys wanna look at that one. Um, and these guys are a pretty common snake. They come in different color variations in the sense of black and brown or tan and cream, but they don't have any red like people think of normal king snakes. The California king snake is um, black and white like that. And these guys are really interesting because in the wild they eat other snakes and they're actually immune to rattlesnake venom. So they can eat small rattlesnakes. So they are our friends. And we are going to be feeding Victoria today, that, that king snake there. Uh, so you can see she's more of like a black and white, and uh, Arthur here is more of a brown and cream, and different lengths of stripes. Uh, so before we feed Victoria, I just want to introduce you to, to our other snakes. There's another rosy bow up here, just like the first one we discussed. Uh, but down here we have a ball python. And as you can guess, uh, she is not native to this area. Uh, she's an example of an animal that has been released improperly. So uh, she was a pet that was re we found at the wetlands. Someone had dumped their pet here, uh, which can have a number of problems. It can lead to the animal dying because they're not used to the environment here, or it can lead to them um, it, 
being becoming invasive. So things like red-eared sliders, if you see like a pond, there's a million turtles everywhere, because they're not native to that area, they, they can take advantage of stuff and outcompete the native turtles. Um, so that's an example of a, of a pet that was released. And up here we have a corn snake, also another non-native snake. Um, she was a pet that they couldn't take care of anymore, so uh, we adopted her and we use her for education purposes. Uh, they're native to the eastern United States, and they're called corn snakes because they kind of go into cornfields and eat all the rodents. And they also have a, a checkerboard pattern on their stomach that looks kind of like Indian corn. So they've been um, dubbed corn snakes. So now, if you guys would like to meet Victoria before we feed her, I'm going to take her out and you guys can get a chance to pet her. <laughs> So we have a couple rules for petting Victoria. We're gonna use our two finger touch, be real gentle. We wanna go in one direction. I'll take her out and then you guys can pet her. Um, <laughs> we don't wanna touch her head or her tail. And uh, we wanna go with the scale so we don't hurt her. She's a very long snake. <laughs> so this is Victoria, California king snake. If you guys wanna pet her, just go from top to bottom there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yep. Does <laughs> it feel different on our belly too? Yeah, the no, belly smooth. scales, yeah, they're really smooth. <laughs> and they're much larger scales. You can see the scale goes all the way across. <laughs> so greedy. <laughs> Anytime we put our hands or anything moving into her cage, she won't think it's food. And uh, viewer discretion advised, we do feed our snakes live mice. Oh. So if anyone wants to leave the room or tune out, you are welcome to. We won't judge you for that. <laughs> oh what happened to his tail? He looks like he's... So she was actually... Um, when she was young, she had a shedding incident that her shed got stuck on her tail. So they had to amputate her tail. That's why it looks like that. They don't normally look like that in the wild. So she she's not venomous, so she is going to constrict her food. Uh, they have they do have teeth, but they're not giant fangs like you think of uh, normal snakes or venomous snakes. Uh, they just use their teeth to hold on while they constrict or wrap them up, and she will eat her food whole. Since their teeth are so small, they can't grind and, and bite off pieces of their food. Oh, oh. she <laughs> bit herself. So king snakes um, eat other snakes in the wild as well. So mm -hmm. sometimes they get a little confused um, about, yeah. <laughs> so, oh my god. So she said, <laughs> sometimes. Oh, geez. She is. she is very hungry, even wow. though we fed her a week ago. Normally snakes eat um, every, we feed them once a week, but they can go up to four months without eating. Oh, wow. Yeah, she got kind of like erratic there for a minute. <laughs> yeah, once they smell the mouse in the air, they, they really get into oh. their hunting mode. Uh, they have a pretty strong, strong sense of smell, and they use their tongue to smell. They have a special organ at the top of their mouth called a vomeral nasal organ, and it picks up the chemical cues on their tongue to convert it into smells. And if you've ever noticed the snake has two parts to their tongue, the fork on the end, that's how they can tell what direction the smell is coming wow. from, just like how we have two ears. Wow. So how much constricting power do they have? Like how much? Uh, I'm not sure like pounds per square inch or anything like that, um, but pretty strong because the snake is basically just a backbone of muscle. Right. <laughs> like they're very strong, like you can feel uh, that they're basically just muscle. Yeah. Like it won't squish it enough that it just explodes, right? No, not that much. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a very graphic animal. <laughs> 
I mean, really, that's kind of like not as dreadful as I thought it would be. It's like getting a headlock. Yeah, right. like yeah. it's it's interesting because like they don't really bleed or anything right. like yeah. that, so it's it's not really gruesome to watch. But yeah, so it waits for it to actually die before it eats it. Or? Yeah, you they they like to like generally uh, sometimes. Yeah. yeah, sometimes if they're too hungry, they yeah. will eat it while it's still alive. Yeah. But um, oh. it's kind of a, a safe practice for them so that they don't get bit. While it's going. Well, to yeah, oh. or, like get attacked <laughs> while they're trying yeah. to eat. And snakes have a really interesting anatomy. It's a it's a common misconception that they unhinge their jaw. They just have a different way that it's um, formed in their body. And they also have two separate bones on their bottom jaw. It's not fused in the center like ours is. And that helps them kind of maneuver and be able to eat something with no arms, because that you can imagine. Eating something twice the size of your head without arms is very difficult. Uh, so that helps them. And most snakes actually only have one functioning lung, because everything is so stretched out. You just have one long, skinny lung. Uh, some species have two, yeah. but they have to adjust their anatomy for their strange body shape. So you guys will feed up one mouse a week, and that's about it? Or? Yeah. Some of our snakes go two to three weeks without eating. Yeah. Uh, the king snakes have a much, uh, much more voracious appetite. Uh -huh. uh, so they will eat more often than like the boas. They'll they can go a couple of weeks without eating. What else do they eat other than mice? Um, here we just feed the mice, but in the wild they will eat um, like baby rats or each birds other. or eggs or each other. <laughs> maybe, uh, so the king snakes eat other snakes as well. Um, with these guys, it's basically anything that they can catch and get their mouth on. <laughs> I don't think they're too picky. As you can see, she almost ate herself. <laughs> you guys have to clean the feeding tank like regularly so they don't smell. Yeah, we clean it between okay. each snake, especially if we're doing the king snake uh -huh. because. Um, in the wild, they eat other snakes. Yeah. So if the other snakes get in there and smell the king snake, uh, they'll freak out and they'll stress out and not eat. Oh, wow. Uh, all right, dude, I think he's good. <laughs> I mean, on the other hand, having a, a tank that smells like gopher snake and mouse. That'd be good for them, yeah. <laughs> So I noticed this picture of this owl over here. This is it, an osprey. Oh, or these owls. I'm sorry. Oh, those owls, yes. What the kind great, of owls are they? Those are great horned owls. Okay. And they actually nest here at Volta Chica. There's oh, actually wow. two chicks down by the pocket pond. Yeah. Um, so if you're lucky, you can see them. Time to send this oh. to the <laughs> But we get uh, great horned owls and barn owls out here. I think that's all the ones that I've heard of. Since we can't really, the, the reserve's closed at night, so we can't really survey for owls or anything like that, but okay. we've seen evidence of them. <laughs> okay. I'm surprised she hasn't eaten it yet. She's usually 
pretty quick. Jesus. Although it's only been a week. So. Oh my gosh, that's like a horrifying <laughs> picture. The mouse is like, oh. <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah, sticking <laughs> out. Sent to Violet. She's done and she'll enjoy it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> She's starting to whine. A little. Tiny. Letting go. I don't know, she's getting, she's getting tighter. <laughs> so, how do they know, like, when you pick them up, like, not to be. Depends on the snake. Uh, if they're not used to being picked up, they don't really know, and they, they can bite you, or. Um, if they're feeling threatened, they'll bite you, or if they're feeling hungry one day. And you smell like food. And you smell like food. Oh. Like if you've touched a mouse and not washed your hands, uh, we've been bit by snakes for things like that. Oh. Um, even if you washed your hands. Even if you have washed your hands, yeah. So oh. depending on the snake, you know, they all have varying levels of um, food motivation, I guess you can say. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Interesting. But then there's some snakes, like, I. Like the gopher snakes tend to be more like docile and you basically have to like make them eat, whereas the king snakes will try to eat anything in their face, <laughs> including your hands. Um, but, but these snakes have been in captivity their whole life, so they've been handled by people a lot. And she's pretty old, I think she's... She's pushing she's, 20, yeah? She's say, like 15 to 20 years old, which is pretty old for a snake, so... She's kind of used to being handled, and we, we take her to events where, where kids yeah. have her and things like that. Oh, okay. So she gets socialized a lot in that sense. Uh, and a lot of our snakes, we, we take out and get them used to being touched by people so that they don't bite, you know. Although you definitely have to watch their behavior and read their body language, because yeah. animals are predict unpredictable. So as much as you handle them, they can still react in a way that's unpleasurable. And he's, he's not venomous. No, he he's yeah, venomous. not venomous. interesting because um, every feeding is different. Yeah. Every snake is different and every feeding is different. So she will sometimes like eat it while it's still alive. Whereas today she's like, oh, I'm going to make sure that it's dead. <laughs> so it's, it's very interesting how variable their feedings can be. Oh, the police took alive today. <laughs> yeah, that's on the show. show. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> that's crazy. Look at that. You have to make that money for you. <laughs> so they do put a lot of energy and effort into eating, as you can see. Um, but it, it kind of works out because that mouse will keep her full for a whole week. Um, and some snakes even longer. <laughs> When they eat, do they become like, kind of like slow? Yeah, they slow down a little bit. Yeah. Um, depending on the snake, some of them are like food coma and some are like, okay, I'm ready to go. So. Really? <laughs> yeah. But they do slow down and they need to like, digest. Oh, right. She was like, totally turning that barbecue skin. <laughs> <laughs> Takes them about four days to a week to digest the whole thing.
Maybe she, I mean, maybe the mouse is still alive. It's pretty look tight like there, yeah, hard to say. Yeah, she might not be on her, on her A game today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that's a photo. <laughs> you just put that as your background, really freak out anybody who steals your phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's your parents. with this one. Has she been let go? <laughs> she hasn't even let, like, let go yet, has no, she? No, she's just gotten tighter. <laughs> let me just wrap another coil around that mouth. <laughs> Will this um, lizard eat all of these crickets? Yeah. Uh, it might take him a few days, but he'll eat all oh, of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They prefer them live, too. <laughs> yeah, they don't really eat them when they're they dead. Them. Yeah. But those two, uh, there's two alligator lizards yeah. in, the, in the bigger tank. So they'll go through those crickets in no time. And then sometimes they'll go over to the, the other side and be jealous of the crickets still left in the other tank. Uh -huh. Try to get them through the glass. <laughs> I was like, they literally can pop the slide open? <laughs> they just look through the glass and then they... Yeah. That is good. Oh. Oh, do we have movement? Nice twitch. <laughs> I thought she was like, oh. Hard to tell if they're so buried in there. Could we be making progress? <laughs> Actually eating? Yeah. 
You guys do this every Saturday mm-hmm. for the work, right? And then right now you're just maxed because of... Um, yeah, because of COVID, we're limiting the number of people okay, watching. Cool. Yeah. And yeah, normally we have like a group of like, what, like 10, 15 people in here? Cool. Yeah. Okay. Plus yeah. I have to find things to do with the mentees. So, <laughs> you have only tested that first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> this would be perfect. Yeah. Very unlike her. <laughs> done. She just wants to take it to go back. Right. <laughs> Can I go back under my heat lamp with this? Thanks. Nice. <laughs> so do they go into the water or do they just use it for drinking? They do, yeah. yeah. They go into their water, especially when they're about to shed. Okay. It helps their skin yeah, loosen up. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah, that's why she has such a big dish yeah, in there I'm so like, she can fit in there. Do they drink? <laughs> It also helps if it gets too hot in there, they can cool off by yeah. getting water. Cool. It seems like every time we do the Facebook Live, they take forever. Mm-hmm. The last couple times. The, ca- the camera shy. <laughs> They're camera shy. <clears throat> Taking her time, I'll give her that. I really hope she eats it instead of just killing it and ignoring it. And given how hungry she was, she, she better eat it. I yeah, I would <laughs> I would think she would eat yeah. it. Yeah. I mean I mean you missed it. She like she lacked on herself. <laughs> She's hungry. Sometimes they just like yeah, yeah, sometimes um, they just like attack as like an instinct yeah. if they're not like hungry enough. Or or defensive if, if, or like, if the defense. mouse is getting in their face. Yeah, something oh. like that. That um, and we used to offer them food more often, uh, and and that would happen more often. But really? once a week, they usually eat. Will they ever eat themselves, like on accident? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the king snakes will if uh, if they're hungry enough. And they see their tail in the corner of their eye. They can yeah. actually eat their tail enough until they actually die from eating themselves. Is that right? Yeah. We uh, actually recently had to rescue one of our snakes from that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Arthur, Arthur over, there. over there. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. So Arthur. he sometimes gets a little excited about his tail and gives it a mouth. Uh, but that's how we know that we need to feed him more often now. <laughs> <laughs> we were having some issues with COVID of, of getting mice. Uh-huh. So they were kind of on a diet for a little bit. Oh, and I think that really <laughs> aggravated him. But now we're getting back into the swing of things and things are more available. So he should be safe from himself. We saw a corn snake in South Carolina like a few months ago. Oh, awesome. My aunt just picks it up. She goes, this here, this is a corn snake. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she, <laughs> but she's she must have known what she was she's doing. She's a marine biologist, ah, yes. and so I trusted that she knew what she was doing. <laughs> but yeah, we've actually seen copperheads in Pennsylvania, ah. um, and yeah, that's, <coughs> I think that seeing, like, the first time I, was, I saw a copperhead, I was pretty shook up. Like, okay. it's, yeah, it's, um. Because they are, I think, kind of like red. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's typically something like, at least in, in the Northeast, you're like, every other snake is either a black snake, a rat snake, oh, a larger yeah. snake. Mm-hmm. Like, when you see a copperhead, you're like, oh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's something. Yeah. <laughs> Those colors mean stay away. <laughs> yeah, in, in California, it seems like there's all kinds of, you know, threatening looking snakes. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's quite a few species of rattlesnakes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We saw a rattlesnake on a trail the other day. Oh, yeah. And, um, <laughs> walked past, literally walked past 
past it, I look down and I just see his tail. Yeah, you're like, oh, that was walking. a rattlesnake. Yeah, he was, he was <laughs> right along the end, uh, the edge of the trail. Yeah, yeah, people often think that rattlesnakes and snakes are very, like, aggressive animals and that if you get near them, they'll, like, bite you, but generally they want to stay away from humans. Yeah. And they, they can feel you come in when you're walking, the vibrations on the, on the ground. Oh, okay. Most uh, rattlesnake bites are in the arm. Really? If people are messing with them. Is that right? Yeah. So they, they're generally not aggressive unless they feel threatened. Okay. Because uh, they don't want to waste their energy that they've spent making the venom. You know, they want to keep it for their food. Right. And for, you know, things like that. So right. it's not their first line of yeah. defense. Yeah. The, unlike <laughs> the likelihood of them thinking that they could yeah. A leg, a human leg is probably not in their best interest. Yeah, exactly. So. I've heard that one of the uh, requirements for getting bit by a rattlesnake is you have to be drunk. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's interesting, like, um, too, how you're able to pretty quickly move out of the way when you hear one. It's, it doesn't take very long to yeah, yeah. run along. Their strike is really quick if you're in the wrong place in the wrong time. Is it? <laughs> but don't they have to kind of like... Yeah, they have to coil back coil up, and yeah. be ready to, yeah, right. to strike. There's some really interesting YouTube videos. Uh, if you look up uh, kangaroo rats and rattlesnakes. Uh -huh. So the kangaroo rats, they have those really big legs. And so they can actually like jump away while the, it's like a slow motion video. Is that right? Of the, the snake striking. And the rat just bounces away. <laughs> wow. I saw one, the, the kangaroo rat jumped up and then kicked it in the face as it went off. It's like, oh, ain't that a kick in the head? <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fan of snakes. <laughs> when we were kids, we would go up into the attic and there would always be big snake skin. Oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. <clears throat> yeah, it's because there are mice, and wherever the mice were, the snakes that's were. So yeah. once you eradicate yeah. the mice, then the snakes go away. But oh, yeah. It's not fun going. I've seen it. I've actually seen snakes in our attics. Wow. Yeah, you go up, and they'll be like in the rafters and stuff. Was that around? Did you go up around here? or Northeast. Oh, OK, yeah. yeah. I mean, she's moving. <laughs> <laughs> she's trying. I, I, I don't know anymore. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is like definitely this, the longest one. Yeah, I've seen this might be while. something like Bobo would do with a rosy boa, who's like super old, but she's yeah. always got a good appetite. How yeah. old is the, the boa? The ball python? Yeah. Uh, we're not sure. We found her already as an adult. Oh, okay. So we have no idea. How long do these, like, both of these, like, live? Uh, the king snakes up to 20 years. I think for snakes in general is like 15. Okay. That's a pretty long time. I think, I, I think kings in captivity, didn't, didn't Cal say like 30 is Oh, in, capti cap yeah. in captivity? Yeah. Yeah, up to 30. Yeah, in the, in the wild, once you pass 15, you're, you're food. Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> For like owls and stuff. Owls, birds of prey. Yeah, birds of prey are, are really are usually pretty good about uh about catching even even venomous snakes. Really? Yeah. Um, I I've, I've seen videos where um uh like a like a, like a hawk will square off against a, a rattlesnake. They'll basically use their big old wings as just like look. I, I look larger, and if they strike the wing, they just they just hit feathers. So it's 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 interesting because like the, the the hawk knows that like if that bite actually lands that they're dead so like they'll they'll, they'll dance around it and try to get it with their talon and stuff. Is that right? It's pretty intense. That's insane. I hate all birds. <laughs> <laughs> See, I love birds. Oh, yeah, you either love them or hate them. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
Hurricanes are, her, her, yeah. are voracious. Creepy long necks. Yeah, no, they definitely use those beaks <laughs> as spears. <laughs> yeah, those, 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 those things will take on uh, like gophers and squirrels. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Humans. Eyeballs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've heard horror stories of people who have rehabilitated them. That, like, it's just a spear. You gotta watch out for it. I don't know if she's actually going to like finish this. <laughs> she fell asleep. She got tired. I mean, that's a lot of work. What it, it is, she yeah. Just did. Want to go to the feeding tank? Yeah. I think we can go. All right. <laughs> yeah, feel free to leave. You guys are bored. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <Yeah. laughs> well, we'll we'll keep the we'll, we'll keep this recording. We're gonna upload upload, upload to YouTube. So if you want and like skip to the end of the video on YouTube and yeah. see her actually eat. See what you missed. See what you missed. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're gonna like, give you out here and be like, oh, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, now they're gone. I'll eat. Real quick. Of course, yeah.
you're good. So you can see she is now starting to eat the mouse. Usually they go head first, but sometimes Victoria does what Victoria does. Looks like she's starting the back end first here. Uh, this mouse isn't too large, so she might be able to get it down going backwards, but it helps to go forward the way that the bones are and the fur. So uh, this might be interesting to see. And you can see how she goes back and forth with her head and that's how they can um, move their bottom jaw, which is two bones, it's not fused in the middle. So they can move their bottom jaw back and forth to help them get the mouse down since they don't have any arms or utensils. So she's making some good progress there. Might have a little trouble with the tail curling back. So she will digest all of it, the bones, the fur, every part of this mouse. It takes about four to seven days for them to digest the whole thing, uh, but, it, but it can give them energy for up to four weeks. she's gonna hide from us of course sometimes they use their body kind of like that to uh, kind of as an arm to hold it in place or just something to keep it from moving kind of help them eat since they don't have any hands to hold on to it so that's kind of what she's doing now she's kind of tucked the mouse under her body so it doesn't flail around while she's trying to eat it back and forth motion, trying to get it down. And if you look right behind her head, she's starting to make an S shape with her body. And that kind of helps her swallow the mouse, kind of helps get it down. So I just noticed that uh, she was actually able to take a breath right now. Her body uh, moved in a big breath. So it's interesting that she can still breathe with that giant mouse down her throat. But since snakes uh, don't use a, a lot of energy, they can go a much longer time without breathing. And you can see behind her head how stretched out her neck is. They can really stretch their skin and scales uh, behind their head really wide so they can fit that big mouse in there. And they actually have a really long esophagus. So the part that goes from their mouth to their stomach, uh, some snakes their stomach is almost halfway down their body. Down to the nose. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so now she'll really use that S-shaped motion to get it down to her stomach. And we usually let our snakes uh, settle for a bit before we handle them after eating because uh, that is a very full stomach so we want to make sure that they are comfortable. You can already see how it's moved past the S shape there. It's kind of might be hard to see the bulge because this wasn't a really big mouse but it's going down pretty quick. You can see how skinny her neck is already. It's already down past the neck. <laughs> She's saying hello. She's ready for another mouse. <laughs> So you can kind of see the mouse bulged down there. Right about here, it looks like. So we'll let her food settle, but Thank you for coming to our public animal feeding and for our watchers online. Um, we greatly appreciate your support of the Bolsa Chica Conservancy. And uh, we also, um, all of our animals are fed through donations. So uh, if you have any spare money for us, <laughs> we'll take um, any donations and we offer memberships as well. Um, we hope that uh, we can reach our community even better now um, with our virtual programs and get connected to all of our community and hope that everyone uh, stays safe and we'll see you next time.